Hey guys, good morning. Today I'm going to be working on the 66 Mustang project here and we're going to tear down the 289. The, uh, the little small block Ford has been pulled out of the 66 and uh, sitting here on the engine stand and we're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to inspect all the parts as they come apart. We're going to look for damage. Uh, we're going to look for wear on some of the some of the components and I'm going to show you guys what to look for when you're tearing your motor down so you can kind of predict uh, what type of machine work you're going to you're going to need and what uh, what work is going to be necessary to put the motor back together and uh, and get it running again. Our plans for this small block is uh, just basically uh, a, a minor rebuild. We're, we're trying to do uh, uh, trying to keep it as original as possible number one. Um, number two we're not looking for any horsepower gains so we're not trying to overboard we're not trying to stroke it uh, and give it a more displacement. We want to keep it keep it stock dimensions keep it uh, Keep it as close to stock performance as possible, but freshen it up and uh, and give it a little more a little more power than it probably had here after 100,000 miles of use. Uh, for tearing it down, there's nothing really special I have to do. Uh, if this was an uh, aluminum block or uh, had aluminum heads on it, you have to be careful in the way you uh, remove the heads and and make sure you follow a proper bolt. Uh, untorquing sequence so you don't warp anything when you take it apart there's no cam girdles on this motor there's no uh, there's no fancy main bearing caps or anything so uh, we're gonna just take it apart with the impact and air tools and uh, break it down take a look at it and uh, do a quick inspection on the parts and determine what needs to go to the machine shop if anything and uh, we're gonna mic all the journals and make sure that everything is within spec uh, and nothing's too worn out if if any of our uh, you know raw journals or crank main journals or the journals on the cam are out of spec then we've got to look at some machine work uh, possibly doing a line bore on the block and using some oversized bearings to uh, to make up the difference um, polishing the crank uh, polishing out all the all the bearing journals and maybe having to rework the cam but hopefully that's not the case with the 289 here we're hoping that that uh, we don't have to do any any machine work journals are going to look good and all we have to do is uh, clean it up throw some fresh bearings and rings at it and uh, we'll be good to go it's pretty windy here today so I apologize if the audio is going to get blown out if I have to I'll voice over uh, whatever we need to uh, discuss otherwise enjoy some music I'm going to get to work alright guys so we've got the 289 here up on the engine stand uh, I've got it fully supported here on the back with the so bolts took the flex plate off of the motor before I mounted it to the engine stand the second time. Uh, and I'm going to start first with removing the exhaust manifolds, get those out of the way, pop the valve covers off, take a look inside, and then we're going to uh, remove the rockers uh, and then get to the top of the intake manifold and try and get this manifold out from around the distributor, which might be kind of tricky uh, being that the distributor is frozen in place. Uh, assuming all that comes apart easily, then I'm going to get the uh, water pump and the rest of the accessories off the front of the motor, timing cover, timing set, get all of that removed, and then we'll flip it over and uh, start pulling the bottom end apart. As I'm removing all the hardware, I'm removing it all in groups and bagging it and uh, labeling all the bags so that we know what bolts go where uh, when it comes time to reassemble. We'll also be inspecting the hardware, making sure we don't have any damaged threads or uh, stripped out bolts. If we do, we'll swap. And of course, when we reassemble the motor, everything's going to get all new gaskets. So all of these old, worn-out manifold gaskets and valve cover gaskets can just be discarded. Alright folks, hold on to your hats on this one. It may be disturbing for younger viewers.
Looks like a fudge brownie in there. Well, on the upside, it didn't pour, pour oil all over me, so that's good. On the downside, there's a lot of corrosion in here. Fortunately, all of this corrosion is from the valve covers themselves, so we have to replace the valve covers, it looks like. But I doubt very much of this uh, rust and scale is from the actual cylinder head. I think it's all from the uh, from the valve cover. So underneath here we have good solid rocker arms and good solid cylinder heads. So the scale and rust looks disturbing but it's really insignificant. It's minor. So now we're going to pop the rocker arms off. Uh, this being a two valve engine has an intake and exhaust valve on each cylinder of the motor eight cylinders 16 valves two valves per cylinder so these rocker arms actuate the valves it's a push rod motor the camshaft turns a lifter that pushes our push rod up against the rocker arm the rocker arm then pivots and pushes our valve um, valve and spring and compresses the spring pushes the valve down and lets our intake charge or our exhaust spent gas uh, out the valve. Most likely the cylinder heads are going to get a, a full rebuild on them. Alright, so these rockers are going straight into my tank of diesel fuel for cleaning. Uh, that's where I'm going to put all of these crusty parts so I can get everything scrubbed down and cleaned up and inspected. Alright, so if we look at one of these rocker arms here, you'll see that they have a, uh, an oval shaped slot in here so that it can move on the stem. The stem is just basically a stud inside the cylinder head here. And that, this slot allows the rocker arm to pivot as it moves through its range of travel. The tip here is the uh, point at which it intakes, impacts the uh, valve stem and you can see once we clean this up we'll see how bad the wear is and we'll measure it and see if these need to be replaced or not the push rod which I'll remove next here basically a hollow steel tube with two balls on the end that fit into the socket on the bottom of the rocker and down into the lifter bore which we'll get to when we remove the intake manifold which is an oil passage that runs all the way through and that's how you pump oil from the bottom end up into the top end to lubricate the rocker arms and then the uh, spent oil runs down uh, through the drains down into the bottom of the uh, oil pan so much the same as the cylinder heads I've got to get the shop vac my poor poor shop vac and uh, get the top of this intake valley cleaned up. So the push rod fits into the cylinder head here and indexes down into the top of the lifter. These are hydraulic lifters. Uh, the force of oil pushes on the push rod and forces the push rod up which then actuates our rocker arm to push our valve down into the combustion chamber. And if the lifter bores are in spec, then we'll just put some new lifters in here. I'm not going to worry about trying to tear these apart and clean them. So new lifters, new push rods. I will reuse the rocker arms that came off, uh, but we'll put them onto some freshly rebuilt cylinder heads, and we'll be in good shape. Well, I tried to not make a huge mess all over the floor, but uh, didn't succeed at that. Okay guys, so now that we've got the, the top end opened up so we can inspect it, everything's looking pretty good actually. Um, now I've got to pull the bottom end off here. So we're going to start with the oil pan, take a look at the crank, and see what the bottom of the crank and uh, the journals look like here. Hopefully it's not as bad as what the inside of the cylinder heads look like. There's going to be a little bit of that in here, but hopefully not too much.
like? Moment of truth or failure? What do we look like inside the bottom end here? I don't know if I should show you guys this. It's freaking awesome! We definitely got a good amount of sludge here in the bottom of the oil pan, but you can see that it's not uh, rusted and disintegrated like the inside of our valve covers were. And from what I can see, just from my cursory look here, everything's covered in oil, no rust, no signs of water damage. Awesome. Yeah, there is a little bit of gunk on a couple of the ears of the crank here. The, uh, the crankshaft ear here where these two rods connect does have a little bit of rust scale on top of it. But uh, the crank itself isn't rusted, so that's good. I'm guessing that's from the layer of water that was sitting here in the bottom of the oil pan. Rust that had fallen down from maybe the top of the cylinder heads and the valve covers into the oil pan here had sat on top of that water and collected inside the uh, the boreholes here on the ears of the crank. But the crank itself looks great. So I've taken the uh, fuel pump off of the side of the block here, getting ready to pull the front timing set off. I removed the harmonic balancer uh, front crank pulley assembly off um, and the fan pulley for the fan, fan belt. So I'm ready now to uh, take off the oil pump but I wanted to explain to you guys how these work if you're not familiar with the, the V8 oil pump. The oil pump's driven here off the bottom of the distributor. It has a shaft that I'll show you here in a second. This is the oil pump pickup. You want to remove that because uh, they don't come with your new oil pump. So we're going to be putting a new oil pump of course in this motor. So we got to take the uh, pickup off of here. And what the pickup does, this will also get thoroughly cleaned in the diesel fuel. What the pickup does is it draws through a sump screen from the bottom of the oil pan. We've got the motor upside down here, so it'll draw, draw oil in through the screen so any big pieces of junk or metal in your oil doesn't get sucked up into the oil pump. Uh, draws it up. Gear driven pump here that pumps oil pressure back into the block and then through the block up into all of your uh, cylinder heads and valve train lubricates through the crankshaft as well. So that's our oil pump assembly. In this hex drive, it's a hex shaft, much like the end of a, uh, a drill bit for your drill driver, your nut driver, uses a hex keyed shaft like an like a Allen wrench. That's what this is. It's a hex shaft. goes down into the bottom of the distributor and drives your oil pump off of the bottom of the distributor. Alright, so I've got to remove our old oil filter here. In order to get uh, get this oil pressure sending unit removed, so we'll see how hard this thing is going to be to get off. Oh, jeez! You want to grip it down at the base of the filter as low as possible, so you don't crush the filter and make your job harder. Not sure who it was at Jiffy Lube that did this last oil change, but they really tightened the hell out of that filter. And you guessed it, old crappy screwdriver. That was easy. And not too bad. Other than this side, these these are the water jackets that run into the engine block from the water pump. You can see this one is uh, completely plugged up 
This side's not too bad here. I think I'm going to hit the uh, hit the end of the camshaft with some heat. Try and put some heat in there before I take that bolt loose. That bolt looks like a breaker. All right, so before I go trying to rattle that bolt out of the end of the cam and snap it off in the end of the camshaft, I'm going to give it uh, a little bit of heat with some map gas here. As they say, discretion is the greater part of valor. And when you're dealing with old rusty fasteners on something you hope to reuse like this camshaft, take a couple extra minutes and go about it the, the best way possible. Or spend hours later trying to fix your broken bolt. And as a side benefit, heating up the gear here will make it easier coming off the end of the camshaft if I do manage to save this bolt. Probably not good to breathe these noxious fumes. Okay, let's uh, cross our fingers and try not to snap this bolt. <coughs> hey! Success! Alright, so on the front of the cam gear here, the larger gears for the camshaft, the smaller gear here is your crankshaft because the camshaft rotates twice as often as the crank does. That's how you get your four cycles on a four cycle engine. The, uh, this offset cup here is what drives the fuel pump. The fuel pump's mechanically driven off of this eccentric, it's offset so that every rotation it drives the lever arm on the fuel pump. And this just pops right off. It's located by a keyway and the center bolt. And it's a little bit easier than dragging out the oxyacetylene torch. This large gear slides over the end of the cam. And I'd rather not tear that up pulling the gear off. So I'm just going to heat it, use a bigger screwdriver, and see if I can wiggle it off of there without damaging the cam. Sometimes a little op opposing leverage does the trick. And just to show you guys that I'm not sitting around doing nothing every day, I'm working on some new graphics for the channel. So let me know what you think here in the comments. Well guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me for today on the 289 teardown for our 66 Mustang project here. Uh, things look good. I'm really happy to see that the internals on the, uh, on the short block are solid. The crank looks good. The rods look good. I haven't disassembled uh, and pulled the pistons out yet. I'm going to do that in the morning. Uh, but initial investigation here initial inspection shows that everything looks pretty good there's no rust there's no apparent damage to any of the rods so I'm hoping that when I tear it down the journals will be in good shape if not the crank will go out for polishing along with the cylinder heads because the heads are going to get rebuilt um, but at this point I'm uh, pessimistically optimistic right I've gone ahead and, and bagged all of my fasteners so I know what needs to go where when it's time to reassemble this and I don't have to spend hours looking for that one nut or what one bolt or one hex shaft I still haven't been able to get that damn distributor out of the engine block so I'm hoping when I get the crank out tomorrow I can get a better whack on it from the opposite side maybe I can drive that thing out I'm trying to remove it without damaging it but it is not cooperating for me so worst case scenario if I do damage it hopefully I can find a used one that won't cost us a fortune and I can throw that in there with the electronic ignition that I bought for the car and we'll have a, a good solid uh, replacement distributor I've got to order of valve covers and an oil pan but we needed the oil pan anyway because somebody had ran a self tapping plug in there so that was already on the radar the valve covers I wasn't planning on having to purchase but that's a small expense so so today was all good news I'm very happy to see the shape of the internals and uh, I think things are gonna come together really quickly on this short block 
I've got one of the valve covers here and you guys can see how bad the rust is. Now I'm pretty sure nobody poured water into this into this engine block but uh, you can see just from the the years of sitting and the condensation uh, coming into the breathers on both valve covers um, you know both of them look very similar that it just rusted away the inside of these covers and that's what all of that built up scale and rust was inside the cylinder heads when I first pulled the covers off it was the the deterioration of these valve covers so these are going in the dumpster and I'll order up a new set of reproductions um, for our small block here so that's it for me for to get today guys if you like the work I'm doing on the 66 Mustang and you think I deserve it or you think a you think the video was half decent give me a thumbs up give me a like uh, if you're new please subscribe we've got a lot of great content coming for you a lot of a lot of work to be done still on the 66 Mustang here as we get the thing back on the road after 30 years of sitting and lots more Ford OBS content I'm gonna put out a new Ford OBS video here soon so thanks for watching guys